Hello everyone. Today we are going to analyze this frame using cantilever method. In this frame, the columns are assumed to have equal cross sectional areas. This is a three story, two bay frame. In this frame, we have three lateral point loads 40 kN in the point J, 20 kN in the point G and 20 kN in the point D. Now let us see the assumptions in the cantilever method. The points of contraflexure in both the vertical and horizontal members are located at the midpoint of each member. The axial stresses in the columns are proportional to their distances from the centroidal axis of the frame. In this frame, let us name the center of the columns. You can see that I have named the center of the columns as S, T, U, P, Q, R, M, N and O. Let us split the frame into two parts from the center of the columns in the top story. Let us take the upper part. Now let us find the location of center of gravity X bar. This frame is vertically symmetrical. So the center of gravity lies in the center. So it lies in the middle column. So X bar is equal to 5 meter. Let us keep the axial force in the point M as Vm, in the point N as Vn and in the point O as Vo. We know that the center of gravity passes through the member Kn. On the left side of center of gravity, the member will be tensile and on the right side the member will be compressive that means on the left side the axial force will be acting downwards and on the right side it will be acting upwards since the center of gravity passes through the member kn the axial force vn will be zero so there are only two axial forces in this case vm and vo will be having the same value. Only the difference is that Vm is acting downwards and Vo is acting upwards. Now let us take moment about M and find Vo. In this case we are moving towards left hand side. Clockwise will be negative and anticlockwise will be positive. Vo is acting in the anticlockwise direction. So that will be positive and the distance is 10. So 10 VO. The load 40 is acting in the clockwise direction. So that will be negative and the distance is 2. Finally for VO we are getting 8 kN. We know that VO and VM will be having the same value but VM will be acting downwards. Let us apply the axial forces. We have calculated the axial forces just above the center of the columns. Below the center they will be acting in the opposite direction. Now let us separate the frame into two parts from the center of the columns in the middle story. Let us take the upper part. Now let us take moment about P. This force is acting in the anticlockwise direction. So that will be positive and the distance is 10. So 10 Vr. 40 kN is acting in the clockwise direction. So that will be negative and the distance is 6. 20 kN is also acting in the clockwise direction. So that is also negative and the distance is 2. Finally for Vr we are getting 28 kN. We know that Vp and Vr will be having the same value but Vp will be acting downwards. Let us apply the axial forces. Now let us split the frame into two parts. 
from the center of the columns in the bottom story let us take the upper part let us take moment about yes bu is acting in the anti clockwise direction so that will be positive and the distance is 10 so 10 vu ot is acting in the clockwise direction so that will be negative and the distance is 10 20 is acting in the clockwise direction so that will be negative and the distance is 6 finally this 20 is also acting in the clockwise direction so that is also negative and the distance is 2 finally for vu we are getting 56 we know that vu and vs will be having the same value but vs will be acting downwards let us apply the axial forces. We have calculated the axial forces in the columns. Using the axial forces, we can find the shear forces in the beams. First, let us take the joint J. Let us apply the rule sigma V is equal to 0. This force is acting downwards, so that will be negative. Let us keep the unknown shear force as V. It is acting upwards, so that will be positive. Finally, for V, we are getting 8. Now, let us take the joint K. This force is acting downwards, so that will be negative. Let us keep the unknown shear force as V. It is acting upwards, so that will be positive. Finally, for V, we are getting 8. Let us apply that. Now let us take the joint G. This force is acting upwards so that will be positive. This force is acting downwards so that will be negative. V is acting upwards so that will be positive. Finally for V we are getting 20. Let us apply that. Now let us take the joint H. This force is acting downwards, so that will be negative. V is acting upwards, so that will be positive. Finally, for V, we are getting 20. Now, let us take the joint D. This force is acting upwards, so that will be positive. This force is acting downwards, so that will be negative. V is acting upwards, so that will be positive. Finally, for V, we are getting 28. Let us apply that. Now, let us take the joint E. This force is acting downwards, so that will be negative. This force is acting upwards, so that will be positive. Finally, for V, we are getting 28. Let us apply that. Now, using the shear forces, just before we have calculated, we can find all of the movements in this frame. We can find the movements in the beams by using the formula WL upon 2. First, let us take the member JK. Here, we have the movements MJK and MKJ. In this member, W is 8, L is 5. Finally, for MJK and MKJ, we are getting 20. Now, let us take the member KL. Here, W is 8, L is 5. So, for MKL and MLK also, we are getting 20. Now, let us take the member GH. Here, W is 20, L is 5. For MGH and MHG, we are getting 50. In the similar way, we can find MHI, MIH, MDE, MED, MEF and MFE. Now, let us find the movements in the columns. First, let us take the member JG. If this movement is 20, MJG and MGJ also should be 20. Similarly, MLI and MIL also should be 20. We can find MKH and MHK. 
by adding these two movements 20 plus 20 we will get 40 now let us find mgd and mdg for that we have to subtract 20 by 50 when we do that we are getting 30 now let us find mhe and meh for that we have to add these two movements and then subtract this movement when we do that we are getting 60 now let us find mif and mfi for that we have to subtract this movement by 50 when we do that we are getting 30 now let us find mda and mad for that we have to subtract this movement by this movement when we do that we are getting 40 now let us find meb and mbe for that we have to add these two movements and then subtract this movement when we do that we are getting 80 now let us find mfc and mcf for that we have to subtract this movement by this movement when we do that we are getting 40 in this analysis we have calculated all of the movements now let us find the shear forces in the columns first let us find the shear force in the member jg for that we have to add these two movements so 20 plus 20 and then divide by the height 4 when we do that we will get to 10 now let us find the shear force in the member kh for that we have to add these two movements so 40 plus 40 then we have to divide by the height 4 when we do that we are getting 20 now let us find the shear force in the member li for that we have to add these two movements so 20 plus 20 then we have to divide that by the height 4 when we do that we will get 10 now let us find the shear force in the member gd for that we have to add these two values so 30 plus 30 and then divide by the height 4 when we do that we will get 15 in the similar way we can find the shear forces in all of the members in this analysis we have calculated the shear forces in the beams and the columns now let us find the horizontal reactions in the fixed ends this shear force is moving towards the right side so the reaction in the point a will be acting towards the left side similarly in the point b and in the point c also the horizontal reactions will be acting towards the left side we have calculated the axial forces in the columns now let us find the axial forces in the beams for that we have to use the shear forces in the columns the axial forces in the beams will be compressive first let us take the joint j let us apply the rule sigma h is equal to 0 let us keep the unknown axial force as h 40 is acting towards the right side so that will be positive 10 and h are acting towards the left side so both of them are negative finally for h we are getting 30 let us apply that to find this axial force either we can take the joint k or the joint l but if we take the joint l it will be easy let us take the joint l 10 is acting towards the left side so that will be negative h is acting towards the right side so that will be positive finally for h we are getting 10 now let us take the joint g 10 and 20 are acting towards the right side so both of them are positive 15 and h are acting towards the left side so both of them are negative finally for h we are getting 15 let us apply that now let us take the joint i 10 and h are acting towards the right side 
so both of them are positive to you 15 is acting towards the left side so that will be negative finally for h we are getting 5 let us apply that now let us take the joint d 15 and 20 are acting towards the right side so both of them are positive 20 and h are acting towards the left side so both of them are negative finally for h we are getting 15 let us apply that now let us take the joint f H and 15 are acting towards the right side, so both of them are positive. 20 is acting towards the left side, so that will be negative. Finally, for H, we are getting 5. Let us apply that. So, in this analysis, we have calculated the horizontal and vertical axial forces. Now, let us find the vertical reactions in the fixed ends. First, let us take the point A. This force is acting upwards, so the reaction should be acting downwards. We know that in the point B, the vertical reaction will be zero. Now let us take the point C. This force is acting downwards, so the vertical reaction should be acting upwards. Now using the movements, we can draw the bending moment diagram. Here you can see the bending moment diagram for the columns. Here for the beams. Now we are going to end this session. Thank you for watching this video.